Welcome to tonight's launch for Generator. Uh, we have some great people presenting tonight, and we'll get to that in just a second. But I'd like to introduce myself first and tell you about my relationship with our special guest tonight, Michael Cudahy. My name is Dan Armbrust, and I'm the CEO of Granite Med Systems. I'm also one of the co-founders of Generator. Granite Med Systems is a national, international company which boasts um, customers such as GE, Philips, Siemens, uh, and others. The company wasn't always that way. Companies have to start somewhere. And that company was started back in 1983 with $600 and a hope. My partner and I wrote a program for the Commodore 64, and later that's evolved into a company that's global, having offices in Shanghai and Mequon, Wisconsin, as well as having over 150 people. I sometimes think to myself, what would have happened if I didn't have $600? What would have happened if I didn't drop out of school? How would that have affected my life and all the associates around me if I went to take in a calculated risk? The same can be said for Mike. You know, throughout my life, I've had many mentors that I have to thank, and some of them are even here tonight. I find it so in encouraging to have someone that's a mentor. I was take, took the opportunity 10 years ago to be introduced to Mike. And since then, we've been getting together once a month, maybe twice a month, just to talk. And having a mentor, somebody that's been there, done it before, that can offer advice, that you can shoot ideas off of, has been invaluable to me. I remember one of the first conversations we had. We talked about trust and how he had taken and gotten rid of all of the time clocks in his businesses. Well, being a quick study, I said, we can do that. So what did I do? I ceremoniously at our next company meeting unplugged the time clocks and wheeled them away to the applause of some of the associates and to the horror of the HR department. <laughs> um, but that's the kind of advice that you get. And I love that type of advice. For those of you that aren't familiar with Mike, some of you might be, but uh, he's really quite a remarkable guy. Having never attended college, he amassed several degrees. He founded a company called Marquette Electronics in 1965. Some of the innovations they did were just amazing. They did one of the first central EKG machines. He grew the business to over $500 million. They went public, eventually selling that business to GE for nine figures. Of course, that would probably be enough for most of us, but not Mike. This past Saturday at lunch, we were talking about new ideas, and he was just as passionate as what he was in the past about these new ideas and bringing them to fruition. He's an angel investor. His philanthropy is unmatched. You know, the beautiful surroundings we have here are a testament to his vision, to his determination, and to his generosity. Please welcome my board member, my mentor, and my friend, Michael Cudahy. Thank you. Hi there, Mike. Cheers. Uh, hiya. Cheers. So Never too early for early times. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things we wanted to talk about was mentorship. And Mike, I'm wondering why mentorship was important and what do you think about mentorship? But this membership? Mentorship. Oh, mentorship. It's a little hard to hear you over there. Whoops. And, and this table, I want to tell you, is about as wobbly as I am at my old age. <laughs> Maybe more. Um, I had a mentor, and my mentor was Warren Cousins. And I have often thought back, what if Warren Cousins just hadn't existed and I had to do this all alone? I don't think I could have. I think that you need a mentor, not necessarily a mentor, a partner maybe is a better word, to bounce ideas off of you. You know, one of the problems with entrepreneurship is uh, there's always a, there's always a uh, sort of a rejection by the, the average guy on the street. I'll give you an example. A guy thinks up something at about 2 o'clock in the morning, and he wakes up and says, wow, if I could do that, that'd be really fantastic. 
So he goes back to sleep, and the next morning he tells his wife, and she says, what are you, nuts or something? <laughs> then he goes to work, and there's a half a dozen engineers around, and he explains his idea to them, and they say, uh, Mike, you better just uh, cool it, uh, that's really crazy. And you know, by the time he gets finished with a, what might have been a really wonderful idea, he's so discouraged he's out of it. Sure. Uh, however, a mentor does, to get back to your point, a mentor does a lot of good for you because if it is a good idea and he's a good guy or she's a good gal, uh, they say, hey, that's a great idea, let's do something with it. So what do you think the characteristics are of a successful entrepreneur? To be kindly and, and, uh, and listen carefully and also know what you're trying to do. I mean, if Warren Cousins, my partner, my mentor, hadn't um, been technically astute as I have, and we're not that, we were not that great either. We were not, no PhDs around. Um, if he didn't know what the hell I was talking about, it would be very difficult. Gotcha. So is entrepreneurship important to Milwaukee and the region of the state? What are your thoughts on that? How's that? Well, how about entrepreneurship for the state and Milwaukee? Is that important? I think that uh, entrepreneur, let's face it guys, and gals, sorry. I think that uh, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurialship, um, <laughs> I got it. I got an award for entrepreneurialship, and, and I still don't know how to spell it correctly. <laughs> and I want to tell you, if you go back about uh, 30 years and you, you drop that name on somebody, they'll say, What's that? So it's a kind of a new name. It's kind of a new word. Entrepreneurship, it's great. Anyway, I think that uh, this country was built on entrepreneurship. It really was, from uh, the gin mill to Thomas Edison to uh, Tesla and all the rest of the wonderful People and now the newer generation, the Steve Jobs and the rest of those guys who have done fabulous entrepreneurships. And um, it, I, maybe it's because there are too many other people around that you don't notice them as much. But I have a feeling, I get a sort of an uncomfortable feeling like, are we really as a country doing enough about entrepreneurships? And in that regard, I think it has to be up here with an entrepreneur. If it isn't up here, all of you guys out there, and there's quite a group of or people who are interested in helping entrepreneurs, and that's wonderful. But if you have a dud and you're trying to talk them into being an entrepreneur, you might as well forget it, because it ain't going to work. You're right. You have to have an entrepreneur who says, I don't care if you're in my way or anybody else is in my way, I'm gonna do it. And that's the spirit you gotta have. What kind of support do you think the community can offer to ensure entrepreneurial success? Well, that touches again, Dan, to my, uh, what I just said. And that is, you can't force somebody to be an entrepreneur. It's nice to turn to somebody, and, like a banker, and there are some bankers here, here, I guess, and say, hey, can I have some help? I can tell you one little story. When we were first starting Marquette Electronics, man, were we short of money. And as we grew, we were even shorter of money. And uh, we were at the Capital Marine Bank, I'll do credit to Capital Marine, and I spent most of my time over there on my knees begging for just 5,000 bucks more, oh God, come on. <coughs> and uh, a friend of mine uh, drifted me over to M&I. And there was a guy by the name of Jack Pulicker who uh, has been gone these many years. And Jack took a liking to me. And that's very important. I said, 
hey, Jack, I'll tell you what I'm trying to do, blah, 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 and so forth. And I will report to you by a simple one-page document once a month. I'll tell you the good news and the bad news. And he liked it. And I was very faithful to what I did. I sent that document. Sometimes it was terrible news, like we lost the blah, blah order. And, but I'd put it on there no matter what. And he called me up and he says, you know, you're the only account I know that tells the truth. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So he pushed the banking limits to the very limit because he believed in me and he believed in us and he believed what we were doing. Yeah, that's great to have that support. I remember a similar story when I was first looking for a loan. And they said, well, if you had a $10,000 CD, I could get a $9,500 loan. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Back then, I wasn't quite so calm. I, uh, right. yeah. uh, anyway, uh, the good end of that story is Dick Perring now is at my country club, and we actually have lockers next to each other. So we still communicate. Um, Let me tell you another thing. Can I? Sure. About entrepreneurship. I've analyzed it. I've often spoke to groups like this about uh, entrepreneurship. And it's always a kind of a difficult, what are you going to say? How are you going to pick out the entrepreneur from the dirt? And uh, it's not that there are that many nerds around. I think everybody somewhere in the back of this huge brain, or small brain, um, has that spirit in them somewhere that says, would I like to do it, blah, blah, blah. And so there is entrepreneurship in everybody. But as I was saying, you get, every, you, you get everybody beat down when everybody beats you down when you're trying to be an entrepreneur very often. And so we adopted a sort of a philosophy of Marquette, never punish, never boo, never demean an entrepreneur, particularly if they fail. So a guy tries something, you say, go ahead, Charlie, see if you can do it. And the idea is he knows that if he tries it and he fails, he won't get fired, he won't get booed out of the place, he'll try again. So fear, I think, is the number one thing you have to look. To overcome. Yeah. Well, that's great. So as a potential investor, you've been an angel investor. What do you look for in a business before you consider offering one of these uh, young companies support? I mean, you back Tomo Therapy. Was it people? What did you see? I think that uh, investing, well, what am I, a lot of people come to me and say, hey, you're the guy that started blah, blah, blah. You started Marquette Electronics. It was great. How did you do that? Where did you get the money? And I want to tell you exactly what we had. We had $15,000. Did you hear that? 15,000 bucks. Now, I grant you this is 1965, so you can say, well, that's worth 50,000 a day. But it still was a very small amount of money. And uh, my partner, Warren Cousins, put in half, and I put in the other half. We didn't go out and uh, rent a fancy office space. We didn't uh, go out and buy a bunch of furniture so we'd look good. <laughs> we had rickety old desks that we sort of scrounged from our rep business. And we were very conscious of the fact that going, um, trying to put on a show is absolutely the wrong thing to do. The right thing to do is do what you're supposed to do. Make whatever you're trying to make work so uh, one of the deliverables of our accelerator is that these people make a presentation. Do you have any advice for the entrepreneurs that are presenting tonight? Of the acceleration it's, of Yeah, it? for the accelerator class, for the people that are going to present tonight. Do you have any advice? Well, I like that word accelerator because I have to be working on an accelerator <laughs> on the West Coast for protons. <laughs> we have some great conversations, let me tell you. We, we solve world problems. We talk about proton technology. It's unbelievable. Anyway, the proton <laughs> accelerator will work. I swear it'll work. And every time I go out there, I get back on the plane and say, 
It's got to work. That's all there is to it. <laughs> and let me tell you, that kind of determination is what made me get through a lot of bad times. I had incredible amounts of problems with Marquette. Everybody looks at it and says, oh, all he did is go straight up once he started. <coughs> but it was a bunch of luck. It wasn't a bunch of luck. It was a bunch of hard work and a bunch of sweat and blood and tears. We worked sometimes 18 hours a day trying to make some of this junk that we built work. <laughs> and it was junk, I'll tell you, in the beginning. I wish I had one of the professors from Northwestern University Medical School up here, and he would kill me. He said, if you don't get, he was German, if you don't get such thing working, I'll submit it. And I said, don't, no, don't, don't worry. And I spent one hell, hell of a lot of time down at Northwestern Medical School underneath the console with a soldering iron using words that I learned in the, in the military. <laughs> and, uh, but it was, it was push, push, push. And I think that goes back to the, if you're gonna be an entrepreneur, you better be passionate. Because if you're not, there's others who are. So your, your advice would be to be passionate tonight about what they're doing and show their passion and that should so, come out, absolutely. Just what you gotta do is say, get out of my way, I'm gonna do this. And they say, here's the problem, it's not gonna work. You hell, it's not gonna work, we'll do it anyway. <laughs> that's the attitude you have to have. Well, I think that's a great point to end on, as a matter of fact, and uh, they wanna get going with their presentations, Mike. So is that okay that uh, we watch a couple presentations now? How's that? Thank you very much, Mike. I really appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Thank you.